the, the, the Congressional Budget Office, they came out with their forecast two weeks ago, and it was an absolute disaster. If you look at them, they're running four bull markets at the same time now, bull market in housing, bull market in the stock market, bull market in the economy, and a bull market in government itself, which is growing as fast as it possibly can. So you've got every market, major market, moving in the right direction, and yet the deficit keeps going up. Special coverage from the Rule Symposium in Boca Raton, Florida, is brought to you by Contango Ore, developing Alaska's next gold mines. Hello and welcome back to Soar Financially, where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman, I'm the EdgeAir Mining Guy on Twitter, and of course, your host for this con uh, conversation here, from the Rule Symposium in Boca Raton, Florida. And I'm joined by Peter Gerskopf. Uh, Peter, it's, it's such a great pleasure to, to have you here. I've been trying to catch you like for, for a while, and uh, it's a great yeah. pleasure to, to catch well, up with you. Thanks for having me, Kai. Really yeah. looking forward to the conversation. Really Sounds looking good. forward. We've got lots in store. Me too. <laughs> got lots in store to, to, to discuss. Yeah. And uh, as always here on the channel, we usually start a bit with the macro to sort it, and then we come down to the micro. Sure. Meaning, let, let's talk economy. Okay. Uh, let's see what, what your opinion is. How, how strong is the economy right now, if, if you were to judge it? Uh, how, how are we looking? Well, it looks pretty strong. I don't see a lot of signs of stress out there. We watch the uh, risk premiums in the market through things like uh, credit default spreads and it doesn't seem like there's any sign of trouble. I do see the consumer starting to roll over a bit. You know, the job numbers and the retail spending numbers are getting a bit weaker, but I don't think anything to be concerned about right now. Yeah, interesting point. Like nothing to concern about. Like because no. Jerome Powell's just this week was uh, you know being what you call it grilled in front of the Senate and uh, talking about unemployment numbers and curious like how nervous he should be about a Fed rate cut as well, given maybe jobs report and weakening jobs numbers. Like, is that anything you're concerned about? Well, um, that brings us to the other side of the equation, which is the debt load and what the Fed is dealing with in terms of rate policy and monetary policy, fiscal policy. That side is a bit of a disaster. <laughs> so if you look at the uh, CBO office, the, the, the Congressional Budget Office, they came out with their forecast two weeks ago, and it was an absolute disaster. If you look at them, they're running four bull markets at the same time now, <laughs> bull market in housing, bull market in the stock market bull market in the economy and a bull market in government itself, which is <laughs> growing as fast as it possibly can. So you've got every market, major market moving in the right direction, and yet the deficit keeps going up. Why is that? And if it's happening now, what's going to happen when they get a recession? So basically, their levers are they're, they're further and further into the corner now. I think the debt spiral is kind of starting in earnest. And, you know, where that leaves us is, is a lot more people wondering, okay, how do I get a hedge from this? Recession is an interesting topic. I, I discuss that with almost every guest, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. Like, how, how far away from a recession are we? Are we in a recession right now? And uh, how are we going to experience that? I would say the answer for the monetary side of things is it doesn't matter. Um, I don't think that we're, you know, entering into a sharp recession right now. I think things are starting to slow. I think credit spreads are tar starting and interest rates are starting to bite a bit, especially on the real estate side and offices and that sort of thing. But I actually don't think it matters much anymore to the uh, debt situation. Uh, uh, interesting, because like, you mentioned the debt spiral. I think we need to talk about that as yes. well, because um, you know, Joe Littman was sitting in your chair on the first day of the conference, and we were discussing, like, well, don't worry about the debt, because if you look at the tax revenue that we're generating, we can easily pay the interest on, on the debt, no problem at all. We've that's got not lots, true. We've got no. lots of runway, so I'm curious no, what your thoughts I, are on that. I, yeah. I don't think that's true. Um, I think that the debt is now costing us more than... Um, defense and other areas uh, entitlements on an annual basis but if you add the debt load and how fast we're adding to it through the deficit and the fast the fact that there doesn't seem to be austerity on anyone's radar right now um, as per the cbo forecast themselves you're going to keep running the deficit much higher and the debt balance much higher so that is very concerning i think we're now going to get to higher levels of debt to gdp deficit to gdp which are really going to start to impact the choices the government has 
they're basically running out of other people's money to spend. Yeah, you, you brought up debt to GDP. So the CBO forecasted 140. I, for, I forgot the time frame. I have to admit that they forecasted yeah. it in, but uh, yeah. I think it was till 2035, potentially. I might, I might be wrong on that one. But one thing on the I debt- I think you're low on that one. <laughs> 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 Probably, but one thing that's confused me a little bit, I have to mm -hmm. admit, is over the last three years, the debt to GDP ratio st stayed steady. So around 120, 122, despite running a $2 trillion deficit, exploding debt, and you know, the $34.5 trillion. Well, they're running GDP up because they're spending so much money on the government sector. So uh, maybe the debt to GDP held relatively steady, but that's not going to be the case for much longer. And again, the first economic road bump they hit, it's going to spike. Uh, I was going to just like, how do you grow GDP? Like you either spend like crazy, but usually your return on investment is, is usually quite bad. How do you grow GDP? Right? You, have no, a, like, you have a bull stock market. You have yeah. right now, the stock market's probably the single biggest indicator of what GDP is going to do. Government sector is maybe next. So, you know, they've been doing it. Yeah. Innovation is another one that comes to mind. Like we're looking at right. the AI revolution. You bring up the stock market, which is fueled by the AI revolution to right a degree. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, any other ways to sort of grow GDP? You have to innovate. You have to come up with new products that generate more value. Sure. You have to have product. <laughs> product you have to have productivity gains. Are and we seeing those? I don't think so. Um, not yet, at least. Not yet. No. Right. Like so AI hasn't really filtered getting down. Getting a little out of my area of expertise now. <laughs> yeah. All I do is I watch the debt and the deficit, <laughs> and and I I believe that uh, more more and more people are getting quite worried. Yeah. No. In terms of the debt, I'm just looking how much further can we stretch it, right? I look at Japan. I keep bringing it up, like maybe a bit naive because their debt to GDP ratio is 250, 255, mm. right? Like, is the mm. U.S. going that way at all? Like, I what, what's saving on, it? I think we're on our way. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't think there's any slowing it down, though. No. Yeah. Is it, the U.S. a saving grace maybe that they have the world currency, the world reserve currency? Sure. That gives them liquidity, right? That gives them liquidity. But um, in the end, uh, I think it means that they are wed to this policy of financial repression now where rates need to stay low or negative in order to be able to continue to service the debt. When you look at it, do you, do you see us hitting the wall? Us meaning the U.S. economy at some point, and then the debt, the debt situation. Like, and, and what could trigger that? Like, what what is the wall? Well, if you're looking for canaries in the coal mine, things that would suggest that we're really going to enter into troubled waters, um, I, I would think that. Um, one of the markers would be credit stress and how is the banking sector, how is the banking sector handling bad loans, the bad loans that exist in the real estate sector, et cetera. Um, that would probably be one of the first catalysts. Um, where's the U.S. going to hit the wall on the economy? I don't know. I, I, I think it's the U.S.'s strongest, uh, you know, <laughs> strongest uh, country in the world right now by far. So it's, it's really... Uh, driving on all cylinders. Uh, I would think that even just a mild slowdown will change the trajectory of what is going to happen with the deficit and with the debt levels. Now, if you look at credit, how big is the crack right now? Like, is it, is it getting bigger? Like no, well, I think so far it's been fairly calm. CDS yeah. spreads have stayed low and uh, we're starting to see, sure, some examples of buildings that are selling well below, <laughs> you know, what no. their previous price levels were. But uh, I, I, other than the banking blip that we had last year at the beginning of the year with Silicon Valley Bank, I haven't seen that much stress in the banking sector. Okay. No, interesting topic. I think it gives us a good overview of the economy and how, how we're doing. The question is now, how does it filter down to what we like to talk about is gold, of course, and precious metals. Yeah. You know, like how, sure. how has that been lifting up the gold price and how much of a factor has that been so far? I think it's been a big factor. So the biggest factor has been central bank buying around the world. Uh, there's no uh, arguing that the central banks have been the largest buyers I was hoping you'd say something new. <laughs> exactly. But I think that um, despite the fact that the ETFs have generally been leaking gold, yeah. um, Investors are buying it in other places. So I do, I do see, uh, I think it, I see it as a pretty easy sale right now for endowments, family offices, other large investors that have broad portfolios to add gold as a portfolio anchor. And I also see it uh, in, you know, kind of the, the sense of uh, uh, people that are really worried about the purchasing power that they're losing each and every year. Uh, replacing currency reserves and um, spare cash balances with gold. Yeah. Most people, it's a pretty easy sale right now to add gold to their portfolio. Yeah, but maybe we need to investigate that a little further because in the East, it's an easy sale. In, in, in the West, people either ignore it or they sell 
into into the current uh, gold price but environment. But you're you're looking at that in the context of the ETF, right? For and example, so yeah. the ETF is the largest monitorable source of um, gold demand in the West, and because the ETF's been leaking, um, we say investors aren't adding, but they're adding in other places. Now, let's come back to why the ETF is leaking. Shanghai premiums. Mm -hmm. So uh, Eastern investors are buying that. And I think there's a profitable spread in taking material out of the ETF and selling it in Shanghai. Yeah, but even barring coin demand is down. Pardon uh, me? Even barring coin demand in the US is down, for it example, is. in the Western world. It is, but coin and coin demand in particular, you know, those are expensive propositions to mint a coin. So, and bars are, um, bars are difficult and expensive to store. So um, I, do, I do think, though, that investors are adding um, gold in the West and they're adding to their holdings through, um, you know, commercial bank deposit um, type of gold. So through their through their uh, banker. Is, is gold expensive right now? I've asked that question to other guests before as well, because when, when we see like borrowing coin demand fall, ETF outflows, mm -hmm. they're, they're selling up and talking with one of the bullion dealers here as well. They're saying like oh, some of our clients are selling their bullion to cover mm -hmm. credit card expenses. Yeah. Right. So is gold expensive right now? Not relative to the other things that you measure gold compared to. So by US dollar standard, it's at a fantastic performance, right? Each and almost each and every year, gold's perform well compared to the US dollar. But if you measure gold against uh, other items, uh, oil, um, the gold stocks, uh, um, other ways of measuring it, it's 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 on the it's on the higher side, but it's not yet at extreme levels. Yeah. No, oh, fantastic. Peter, we, we didn't properly introduce you at the beginning. Okay. And we, we, we might have to do that. And, okay, uh, sure. And uh, really talk a bit through like your history as well, because it's really interesting. You used to work at Sprott. You retired yes. uh, yeah. fr from it, but then you joined SAP Resources, which is Sprott Capital Partners, just in short. Mm -hmm. Or used to be Sprott Capital Partners. Now it's SAP Resources. But also you work with Eric Sprott on an interesting project called Argo Gold. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get to Argo Gold. I want to talk about that. It's a really interesting project you're working on. But I want to understand a bit more, because you gave me a couple tidbits of information that what you're working on at SAP and what you're seeing in the market right now sure. on the mining market, because it is relevant to what we're seeing here at this conference as well. Give us an overview of sentiment that you're seeing at SCP. Well, SCP is a global mining boutique and it handles investor interest in the sector. It handles equity issuance in the sector and, and capital raising and it handles strategic advice. So those are the areas of business. I would say that in general, mining is a bull market type of industry now. There needs to be more and more investment in mining. And I'm not just talking about gold and silver, I'm talking about uh, base metals, um, industrial metals, and also uranium and, and other decarbonization style metals. So m mining as an industry for 30, 40, 50 years was generally under invested compared to the uh, balance of the economy. People didn't want to replace reserves didn't want to build new mines it's still very difficult to do that it takes a long time but right now it's definitely in an investment cycle most commodities are quite healthy in terms of allowing efficient producers to earn a pretty good margin so we see it as a buoyant growing market we're kind of in build mode right now we're hiring <laughs> and which uh, is opposite to the industry a little bit I have yeah, to admit. if you look yeah. at the investment banking industry and in, in mining it's looking quite abysmal out there People yeah. are leaving. We'll have a record year this year. <laughs> I've never seen more demand for strategic advice. Companies are bulking up and getting together. Uh, capital raising is reasonably active. So it's it's a pretty good market right now. Yeah, fantastic. Like Because you hear very <laughs> conflicting things, like some shops are just completely folding well, as well. It's hard, it's hard to raise money if you're a yeah. junior company. What has happened is the sector's been a little hollowed out from an investor perspective. Um, a small company under 200 million in size. There's not a lot of mining specialty investors anymore that will pay attention to a company. That's one of the reasons they have to get bigger. Any particular reasons is that 200 million? Is that sort of what you're seeing? Is that uh, ballpark? Uh, yeah. You know, once you get over two, 300 million, you start to be able to attract more general investor interest. So uh, no, it's interesting. Like Joel Littman used to 250 in, in okay. the first interview, 250 million, because it's easier to access the debt market. Yeah, for, debt, for those companies, well. for example. Yeah, debt so as that well. was interesting. Yeah. The, your numbers were so close together. <laughs> I thought, okay, maybe there was a coincidence. No, <laughs> no, no. Fantastic. Um, I would really want to talk Argo Gold because sure. I think it's a really interesting 
interesting new product and maybe we'll start very high level. Maybe you give us a bit, uh, you know, 30 second cliff note version of what Argo Gold is. Yeah, well, if um, you look at what's going on with gold market and gold technology, gold investments, um, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept, but uh, gold itself um, can be logged on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And um, the main thing with gold, of course, is to have physical backing to have access to your gold and to verify that it's good delivery gold and hold it in good custody in a bankruptcy remote type scenario. All of this can be done now using technology. So what Argo is, is the first dealer that I'm aware of that will focus exclusively on trying to sit at that leading edge of technology and offer investors 24 seven access to gold uh, to be able to um, buy it and sell it out of a vault a qualified vault, knowing that there's physical, good physical ownership behind that gold. And um, eventually, I think that the industry will get to a spot where um, gold will be tokenized and you'll be able to use it as a payments and a wiring kind of system for uh, managing your, your wealth. And the really interesting thing, the most important message I would have on it is most investors are buying gold as a hedge to the financial system. So the question is, why would you buy gold through the financial system if you're trying to hedge it in the first place? And right now, uh, even though ETFs are, are physical ownership of gold, you're still buying it through the financial system. You're buying it through a broker dealer. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping to take investors a little more hmm. close to their gold so that they can hold it outside of the financial system as well. I was going to say, it was my next question was like, what's the main difference to an ETF? Like, I think uh, holding it outside the financial in institution, like what about pricing? Of, yeah, so of e that? ETFs hold physical gold, but yeah. they are uh, an accumulation inside of a securities vehicle. Yeah. And then they trade liquidly on the exchange. Uh, during exchange hours. So nothing wrong with that, but you're one step removed from your gold and you're holding it probably through a, a bank or a broker dealer in the financial system. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. And it's been the most liquid way to access gold. So mm -hmm. what Argo will be is a direct holding with a vault mm -hmm. and um, g getting again, one step closer to your gold, um, being able to access it, trade it 24 seven, and um, I think in a lower cost uh, fashion at the end of the day than holding it through an ETF. What about fractional ownership? If I, like gold costs $2,400, but I can only invest 2000 Like, Is that possible? Like, yeah, sure. Fractions? So, so we'll go to full fractions and no. any, any denomination will be available. Oh, fantastic. Okay, mm -hmm. no, that makes it makes it easier and mm -hmm. accessible. Not necessarily right? for physical pickup. If you want to pick your gold up from a vault, yeah. they usually have minimums. I'm not sure yeah. what they are exactly, but uh, uh, I think that for a significant amount of gold, you're going to be able to pick it up and drive your car to the yeah. to the vault and <laughs> and do a redemption if you want. Yeah. Like, how does the pricing of it all work? Like, run me a bit through it. Is it like like people are familiar with ETFs. Like, mm -hmm. how, how can we compare that to like the pricing model, like of an ETF, for example? But also, like when gold is trading at twenty four hundred, do you is that replicated? Is that the same price? Do you get yeah, the same thing? It's a, it's the same price. Yeah. Um, so I guess eventually it will have to be decided what denominations does does a gold token trade in. But yeah. for now, let's just assume it's an ounce, and uh, it'll have a very similar trading spread to an ETF, um, fairly tight for investors and probably much better than a physical dealer has been able to access for investors in the past. So the trading spread will be tight. And then there's a storage fee and the storage and custody fee for an ETF is about 50 beeps. Mm -hmm. You can get the GLD mini for as low as 20, 20 beeps, I believe. And on top of that, you pay your broker dealer to serve as custodian and, 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 and kind of uh, usually most individuals pay their broker dealer an annual fee. So it comes in in the total package somewhere between 100 and 150 basis points a year. I think we're going to be able to go way under that with Argo and that uh, by accessing the vault directly, we're going to be able to offer physical gold ownership for kind of less than 50 beeps and maybe significantly less depending on the size of investment. Where do you store your gold? We're going to be storing it to start with at the Royal Canadian Mint because they've been at the leading edge of technology and we feel very strongly that that is a uh, reputable and safe storage location and they also provide valuable services 
uh, like their annual reporting of the gold. So, oh. or annual daily <laughs> reporting of the gold, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, re- redeeming, you mentioned it earlier, is like yeah. pickup is, is possible. Like, how, how can you redeem the digital gold again if you want? Maybe can you get physical delivery? Yeah, you, you can get physical delivery. You'd have to pay for that, but oh. um, again, there, it's going to be more efficient uh, once you get beyond a certain amount. You're not oh. going to go to the mint and pick up a five dollar <laughs> yeah, holding of gold because yeah. <laughs> there's no going to be no way to do that. <laughs> yeah. Now, interesting. Like, how do you see that develops? Like, you're the first one like th- that sort of offers digital gold in that in that form and that product. Like, uh, how how is that product going to develop? You you mentioned to me before we sat down. Like, maybe you can even transfer it to Zurich and other locations. Yeah. Maybe Singapore. Like, how how is that going to look? And how is that business model? Well, there's different products. Uh, first of all, there are other dealers online that offer fractional gold. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's a question of where they store it, how they store it. Is it allocated or is it not allocated and and most of them are fairly opaque in terms of not really telling you what's going on in the background where it's being stored um but but some are quite legitimate and um and then i think that there are other products that have already been tokenized for uh, you know where, where you're actually able to buy gold tokens currently so we're going to offer investors a choice um I think eventually there will be an industry token that gets created from a pool of London good delivery gold, and it's mm-hmm. going to get to be a lot more efficient. Oh, and so we want to be the first one to offer that <laughs> kind of a token and, and exposure to investors. Yeah. What about an Argo silver or an Argo copper? Are we going to do that as well? Well, we're going to do silver for sure. Yeah. You know, I, I, I believe in silver. I'm very excited about the prospects <laughs> for silver. And I, I think that anytime you get into a very strong gold bull market, silver is in an even stronger bull market. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely yeah. silver. Yeah. And then we'll see about copper. Copper is a bit more difficult because it's weighty and yeah. uh, you need a lot of storage. Uh, so we'll, we'll take some time before we consider that. I left out uranium because delivery of that is a bit iffy. Like getting delivery of uranium. You could do uranium and <laughs> to- you could do uranium in a token in a digital yeah. form. Absolutely. But delivery, you can't really go to. Oh, you can't do You can't go to a no. mint and pick up a. No, you, know, you can't like, do I'm Pick up two pounds of uranium right there. No, no, no. <laughs> That's going to be a tricky one, yeah. right? Because um, you got the experience at Sprott uh, as well with uh, uranium. Because yes, have the we Sprott do. Uranium Abs- trust. Absolutely, so big that's, success. That's where my mind went first. But I was like, well, it doesn't make any sense because you can't really take delivery. But, but you, you could probably you, do it. You could probably offer digital certificates for storage of uranium okay. direct to investors. It's just. Why bother? Um, you'd have to be able to offer that in size. And um, I think right now investors have a pretty good option on exchange for that. Yeah. Yeah. Costco is selling gold bars. Yes. And, and one thing it really like highlighted was accessibility to gold. Biggest retailer in North America now that- Yeah, with uh, overnight pretty much, yeah, which, right. which is really interesting. Which is- makes sense actually they have a huge footprint so yeah absolutely it was like it, it really highlighted that maybe access to gold or physical gold was a problem before that you had to go to bullion dealers that were maybe just in major towns not close to you right and you had to go do i that. agree it's, it's just probably one step more efficient through costco so, yeah. like the question is like argo gold like does that fill that need as well does it make access easier well, if you trust that the gold is there and you know it's there and it's good delivery gold and it's in a good yeah. vault, my question would be, why do you need to store it physically? It's just awkward to store gold physically. You know, you got to mm-hmm. have it in your house. It could be stolen. Yeah. It could be damaged in some way. So, you know, why not just tap on yeah. your phone and own it like immediately? And that's <laughs> that's kind of more of what we're offering. Yeah. Like, were there any plans to join like the World Gold Council or anything like to sort of get more access, like maybe even direct access to gold directly from the mines? Well, I I sit on the World Gold Council now, but it is a consortium of um, producers. Yeah. So that's a totally different story. I'm I'm Just, I'm I'm on as a representative yeah. of Agnico Eagle. Oh, okay. The um, the World Gold Council, uh, you know, their mandate is to inform about gold, to uh, open new markets for gold. So they're very involved in this, what they call yeah. the Gold 247 initiative, which is the technology behind gold as well. They're doing great work in that area. David Tate, his team, um, Joe was here this week as well. Yeah, we had and, that in your chair as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing fantastic work in the background, uh, on the backbone of what the system will take to operate. Yeah. Can anybody buy 
Argo Gold right now? Like how, how accessible is it to me? Like well, I'm we based in Germany, for example. So. Yeah, we haven't opened yet, but oh, uh, within <laughs> within two weeks, anybody okay. will be able to buy it. That's anybody? Right. Yeah. Okay. No, mm-hmm. fantastic. Thank mm-hmm. you. Where, where can we find more information about Argo Gold, Peter? It'll be on the website. ArgoGold.com? Yeah. Fantastic. We'll definitely yeah. link to that below. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, fantastic. Really appreciate the conversation, okay. Peter. Well, thanks for really appreciate thanks you for joining us. To me. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. And buy we, gold. <laughs> buy gold. Buy any gold. It's, it's any the gold. right buy thing gold. to do. Yeah. Absolutely. No, fantastic. Peter, thank you so much for okay. your time. Thank Been you. looking forward to this for a while and uh, glad we could make it happen. Sounds good. Thank okay. you so much. Thank Everybody you. else, thank you so much for joining us here at Soar Financially from the floor of the Rural Symposium in Boca Raton, Florida. Hope you enjoyed the conversation here with Peter Groskopf great authority in the gold space and in the mining space in particular as well. So really honored to have him join us here. Thank you so much. Go check out ArgoGold.com. The link is down below as well. And uh, leave a comment, leave a like. Where do you think gold is headed? And uh, how are you storing your gold? How are you accessing your gold? How are you buying gold? Really curious to learn more. And uh, how, how are you doing it? Let us know. Subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll be back with lots more here from Florida.